We did our study on the judgment last Sabbath, and uh, we're going to, in a way, continue with how the judgment and God's justice uh, work. So with that, we will start with John chapter 7, verses 14 to verse 18. Now about the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How does this man know letters, having never studied? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak of my own authority. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. So with that, uh, with those verses, what we hear Jesus stating very clearly that his doctrine is not his, but it's all from God. So everything Jesus taught and revealed, all his activities, every aspect of his ministry was to show that everything he did was from God. And with that in mind, uh, when we look at uh, verse 18, and when Jesus said, one who sent him is true, which is God the Father is true, and no unrighteousness is in God. With that, I want us to look at Proverbs 12, 28. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 28. And we will see here again what is being stated. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 28. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 28. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. Okay, so we, we looked at what it was stated by Jesus in verse 18 of cha John chapter 4, and I'll read it once again, then we'll look at that passage in Proverbs. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true. And there is no unrighteousness in him. And then in Proverbs 12, 28, in the way of righteousness is life. And in its pathway, there is no death. So in the way of God's righteousness, there is no, there is life. In the way of God's righteousness, there is life. And in its pathway, in its way, there is no death. With that now, let us look at uh, John chapter 8. Keeping in mind what we have just read, now we're going to look at, a, at an event that transpired, and it is covered in John chapter 8, verses 1 to verse 19. We'll read the whole passage first. So John chapter 1. Eight. I mean, John chapter 8, sorry. John chapter 8, verses 1 to 19. We'll read the whole passage. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now, early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger, as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, 
let him throw a, st a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, <clears throat> Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who, know, he who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said to him, You bear witness of yourself. Your witness is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, Even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you do not know where I came from and where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. And yet, if I do judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bear witness, bears witness of me. So with, with mm. those verses, what we're going to uh, look at now is... Uh, keeping in mind that, that this uh, woman was caught in adultery in the very a act, uh, according to the accusers. And then in, in verses uh, 6 and verse 8, it reads, uh, in verse 6, they said, then this they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. And in verse 8, he does the same thing again. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Now, what do you think Jesus could have uh, written on the ground? He's writing something that, that they are very familiar with. It wasn't something that they weren't familiar with. So they knew exactly what Jesus wrote on that ground. And, and these were who? The Pharisees. Mm -hmm. So these were the people that knew the scriptures. And I want us to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 6 and 7. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 6 and 7. Whoever is deserving of death shall be put to death on the testimony of two or three witnesses. He shall not be put to death on the testimony of one witness. The hands of the witnesses shall be the first against him to put him to death, and afterward the hands of all the people. So you shall put away the evil from among you. Okay, so we have looked at that passage very clearly, what has been stated now Look at Deuteronomy chapter 19 from verses 15 to 21. One of the witnesses, uh, sorry, one witness shall not rise against a man concerning any iniquity or any sin that he commits. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established. If a false witness rises against any man to testify against him of wrongdoing, then both men in the controversy shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges who serve in those days. So, so we've seen clearly what has been stated, okay? And then I want us to look at uh, Jeremiah 17, verse 13, okay? Jeremiah 17, verse 13. O Lord, the hope of Israel and all who forsake your and all all who forsake you shall be ashamed. Those who depart from me shall be written in the earth, 
because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Okay, so with that, that in mind, let's go back to the passage again of John chapter 8, verses uh, 1 and onwards. So here, this woman has been caught in the very act of adultery. So when we look at Exodus chapter 20 and verse 14, very clearly in the Ten Commandments, we are told, and I'll read that for you. Exodus chapter 20, verse 14, you shall not commit adultery. And then in Leviticus, when any person is caught in adultery, they are to be stoned to death. So now with that, they brought this woman, <clears throat> caught in the very act of adultery, and, and, uh, and here they are with her in front of Jesus. And, and look at, uh, uh, in verse 5, now Moses, in John chapter 8, verse five, 5, now Moses in the law commanded, now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? Okay. So here they are asking Jesus, what does he say? And he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then in verse 9, then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. Verse 10, when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? Now keep this in mind. These accusers accused this woman and she was caught in the very act of adultery. There's no question or doubt of that. So she was caught in the very act of, uh, act of adultery, but Jesus now is telling her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no, one accused, has no one condemned you? Or the same word could be used has, that no one now has judged you. Verse 11, she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you, Go and sin no more. So what Jesus is telling her, I've taken care of the issue. These accusers of yours are no longer here to condemn you and judge you. And I am doing exactly the same thing. And I'm asking you to do one thing. Go and sin no more. What goes through your mind when you think of what Jesus is telling her? Now, naturally we will think what Jesus is telling her, that look, I don't want you to commit adultery anymore. And we know for sure, of course, Jesus would tell her that. Jesus would not want her to be living a, an adulterous lifestyle. Jesus would never promote such a thing. So the whole message that is being given here by Jesus is something very, very interesting. When he says, go sin no more, he's also telling her, I have saved you from something that if I wasn't here would have transpired. They would have stoned her to death. And then they could have justified it through the scriptures. They could have, uh, uh, the Roman authorities, according to what we understand, they could do this according to their law because they were told, go take care of things according to your law. So when Jesus tells her this, go sin no more, what he's saying that I am here and you are fortunate that I'm here and I have taken care of the issue don't sin anymore. The next time around, I might not be here to save you from what would have happened. And I want us to keep that in mind. Why? Because in verse uh, 
11, when Jesus says that, neither do I condemn you and go sin no more, then Jesus spoke to them again, to the whole uh, accusers. Then Jesus spoke to them again, I am. And that word, I am, we must keep that in mind. Whenever that is used, I am, Jesus is making a very subtle claim of who he is. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So Jesus is very clearly telling these people, the Pharisees, the leaders, the people that were uh, the, the students of the oracles of God. These were people that were also teaching others everything about God. Jesus now has dealt with this situation. We looked at the verses from the Old Testament, what it clearly stated. And Jesus now is saying, look, I am the light of the world. What I have said, what I have done, this is the final authority. I am the light of the world. Nobody else is that person. I am that person. I am the light of the world. He who follows me, everything that I have just done here in this particular situation, he who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So here Jesus, doing all what he's done, he's saying, look, if you follow me, you do exactly what I have taught. You understand the scriptures the way I have explained it and I have demonstrated it. You will never walk in darkness, which means to say what? Here we are. And if Jesus isn't the final authority for us, keep this in mind. What he stated there to them applies also to us. If Jesus is not the final authority for us to understand the scriptures, then according to what Jesus is stating, we are walking in darkness and we do not have the light of life. We do not have the light of life. And there's a big difference between having the light of life and not having the light of life, which means to say we will through Jesus come to know what is the message that is the light of life. Then he goes into verse 13 and look at what the Pharisees now stated. After saying what he stated in verse 12, the Pharisees therefore said to him, you bear witness of yourself, your witness is not true. Very profound what they are stating, okay? For according from their perspective, what they are looking at Jesus to be. Ah, he's just this ordinary person. He's nobody. And he is just promoting his own agenda. He's just promoting his own doctrine. He's just promoting his own, in a way, theology. Okay? This is what they are saying to him. Jesus answered and said to them. And I, dear ones, I want us to make sure that we understand how this applies to us. It had its application then. How does this apply to us? Even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true. For I know where I came from and, and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. That's why they said what they said in verse 13. That you are bearing witness of yourself. And Jesus is saying, the reason you are stating this, you are in total ignorance of who I am. That's why you have just stated what you have stated. Verse 15, you judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. So when Jesus is saying, I judge no one, he has just, what? He has just done a judgment. He just completed the judgment. So what is he saying, I judge no one? The only way we know what he's saying, I judge no one, is if you look just prior to what he said. He says, look, you judge according to the flesh. So they took the Old Testament and they wanted through the Old Testament 
to have this woman stoned. Jesus is telling them, you judge according to the flesh. Why? Because you have totally missed what he's teaching, what he's revealing, the person he is. And that's why you are judging by the flesh. I judge no one according to the flesh. That's what Jesus is stating there. Even though the word I've added on, I judge no one according to the flesh. But the verse and the context, if you look at the totality of the context, the context is clearly teaching us that that's what Jesus is saying. You guys who know the scriptures, but you don't know the God of the scriptures, you judge according to the flesh. I judge no one according to the flesh. Verse 16, and yet if I do judge, my judgment is true. Keep that verse passage in mind now. And, if, and yet if I do judge, my judgment is true. So what I have just done, what I have just revealed, what I have just demonstrated, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. So what Jesus is stating here, that look, what I have just done, even though you have understood it a certain way, and, and we looked at all those passages from the Old Testament, he's telling them, if I do judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me, in verse 16. Okay? So now he's identifying himself with who? With God the Father. So he's saying, he's telling them now, what? That you guys have no concept of who God is. None. They had the scriptures. They interpreted things in the scriptures. They brought this adulterous woman before Jesus. And he's telling them that you are totally out of it. Verse 17. It is also written in your law. that, the, And we had read, read that. In your law that the testimony of two men is true. So he's now telling. Yes. We read that. And, and it did say the testimony of two or more witnesses. Verse 18, I am one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. So Jesus now has completely identified himself with everything that God stands for, everything that God revealed, everything that God taught. He's saying, I am doing exactly that you have totally misunderstood the scriptures you have no understanding of the scriptures the way it should be understood i am no different to exactly what god is like then verse 19 they said to him where is your father jesus answered you know neither me nor my father so clear why? Because you don't know me. Because if you had known me, then you would have known the Father. If we come to know Jesus the way Jesus should be known, when we come to know all of Jesus' teachings and revelation and demonstration of every aspect of his ministry, there's no possible way we will be on the wrong path. I'll read that once again. They said to him, where is your father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. So that's why it is so, so important for us to make sure that we come to know God the way we're supposed to know God and that can never materialize in the lives of any human being. No human being will come to know God the way they, sh they should come to know God, except through the person of Jesus Christ. You know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. 
These words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught them in the temple, and no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. So what is being stated there, that if they had their way, if they could have, they would have taken him. They would have taken his life. They would have done something to him. But because his hour had not come, this did not transpire. And once again, as we are going to continue in this judgment and justice uh, issue, we will see why Jesus is central for us to be able to understand things the way we should understand them. And that's why in our study this morning, in, in the lesson study, some of the discussions that went on there, I think was very interesting and very insightful. And I had no idea of that study and how we have led into our study this morning here in, in this sermon time. So we'll continue with this again next Sabbath and go deeper into this whole aspect of what Jesus has just stated here, that I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have, but have the light of life. Go ahead, John. When you were at saying about uh, the woman, uh, Jesus said, and don't, and don't sin no more. Yes. It didn't just mean the sin of adultery. Yes. all sin. Of course. That's, that's yeah. Of I never thought of that until you brought it up. But no, no, know, of course. Right. Because see what, what, if we look at it the right way and what John has just brought out, if we keep this in mind, when Jesus said to her, go sin no more, well, he's dealing with what the Pharisees would have done to her then. But to us now, if Jesus is telling us, go sin no more, he's telling us, don't sin. Because any sin you're going to commit sin, what's going to happen? Who's the accuser now? The devil himself. Okay, so what will the devil want to do? He will want to stone us. That's his death principle. And Jesus is telling us, don't go into that sin domain. Because if you go into that sin domain, whatever you sow, you're going to end up reaping. And in that domain that you go, the domain of the accuser, when you go into that domain, from that domain, you are going to experience the fallout for sin, not from me. Jesus gave that revelation. It's not me that is going to end up doing harm to you or punishing you for your sins or whatever it is. It's right embedded in the choice that you are going to make. And my prayer for us is as we continue looking at this issue of the judgment and God's justice, we will see from the scriptures how important it is to make sure that all of our understanding is based in the person of Jesus Christ.